maybe episode 68 or 67 of the We'll Just Agree to Disagree podcast. I am Ryan Lee. Beyonce is out today, but sitting in guest co-hosting is Maya J, who is fam to our podcast and is a media industry colleague of ours. Maya, what's up? Hi. I'm like so honored right now. Like <laughs> you, You're feeling good for Beyonce. That's a great scene. I'm going to be nice. You know, usually I can be a little harsh on Beyonce, but I'll be nice. Pray for me, y'all. <laughs> what do you mean? Bro? What? Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> but I love that we both did this white t-shirt and hat combo. This was not planned. At all. <laughs> but I love this. We're already on the same page. Love all right, me. let's get into it, Mike. There's a lot to talk about. Um, Sesame, Sesame Street. Now, I'm going to give a disclaimer. There have been so many updates in this case. By the time people watch this episode, there may, may, may be another update that we are not aware of yet. But let's get into it. Basically, this video went viral, starting off with this mom who posted the video. Uh, Sesame Street character at the park in Philadelphia was walking through the parade, you know, waving to all the kids. There were two little Black girls that were trying to get this character to come over, was trying to wave to him. The character was shook them off and was like, no, but then proceeded to hug the white little kids that were there, okay? Now, this video really got picked up when Kelly Rowland first saw the video and posted it on her page and the blogs went crazy with it. Following that, Sesame Street out in Philadelphia tried saying, hey, no, that's not what happened. You know, they can't see low, so they didn't even see the two black girls. They were just looking in the crowd. And they also said, also people were asking for photos and that's what they were waving no to. But if you look at the video, we all understand that it's not what took place. Then once one video happened, I think Maya, we both said we saw at least dog on three to four other videos. I know I saw four. <laughs> other videos of other Sesame Street characters also doing the same thing towards other black boys and girls. Well, now Sesame Street that is over all of the locations basically came out and said, hold on, we don't condone this. Everybody needs to do a new training, a bias training, blase, blase. Now, the original video that went out, the family has went and got a lawyer. Yeah. And they said that they want to represent this family and all the other families that have been done wrong by Sesame Street. Now, I didn't know it's been going to step further, which you put me on game to. Just when I thought I had knew everything about this, what is the final step that we know that is happening right now? Yeah, so they said they're not looking for any money. They don't want to sue Sesame Street or anything, but they're looking for a actual genuine apology. Right. And they want the Sesame Street company, I guess, to pay for any mental health issues that the girls may have following this. Okay. And yeah. Okay, now, Namaya, me and you both have nieces and nephews right period we both are with a lot of kids 24 okay. 7 let that have been a kid you were with <laughs> mm -mm. Say, i'm saved but not soft <laughs> yeah, i like that i'm saved but not soft maya what would you have done if you were that mom you know honestly when i first saw the video riley i'm gonna be honest with you i didn't think that it was any malicious intent to it. Like I thought like, okay, like maybe they just overlooked them. Like, you know, when you turn, you know, sometimes you're looking high, you don't see the little kids. Like mm -hmm. I really wanted to think the best of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's just the type of person I am. I see both sides of everything, right? Well, sounds like Beyonce, she's not here, but she is here today. <laughs> Whatever, but after I saw, I think the fourth video with one of the characters like slapping one of the kids. I don't know if it was a slap or like a, but it was too much for me. That's when I was like, oh, something is wrong here. I don't know what's wrong, but something is wrong. And I'm glad that it's being addressed. You know, Sesame Street has always been very inclusive of like the genders, the all races, you know, kids with disabilities, everything, you know, so I was, just surprised that Sesame Place, where you can mm -hmm. take your kids to actually, you know, quote unquote, meet these characters, wasn't a safe place for all kids of all backgrounds. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, I, that, that's a great answer. And <laughs> <laughs> you, you are more saved than me. Um, I think a few things. I think one, from the apology to the action, it was all trash. I'm going to say that for the lack of better words. Um, I think we know that it was done on purpose. I think, you know, we got to take the costumes off. There is a human being in the costume wearing it. And I think that person probably is a found of racism. And I think he knew what he was doing. And I think, unfortunately, this is why racism is now taught at such a young age in this country. Because oh, these two Black girls who are young, they may not have fully understood what was going on, but you now are on a video that has gone viral. Your family now has a lawyer, all because you went to an amusement park, which is supposed to be a good time. Um, so I absolutely think he knew what he was doing. I, to say he was looking up and he did not see them, no. He purposely waved off, said, no, I'm good. I'm going to go to the white girl right next to you. Um, that could have not been my kids. That could have not been my nephew or nieces. Um, that, that would have been a problem right then and there. Well, I, you know, one of the stories that I read said that the family actually, like, after they saw what happened, they took it to the park immediately, mm -hmm. you know, and said, like, hey, this isn't right. And I guess the park just kind of, like, waved them off. See, the park would have known about me before I took a video to them because the park would have been calling 911 because I would have been going crazy. <laughs> Don't you ever disrespect my kid in the middle of a parade. Furthermore, this is why I stand on, I don't like any type of cartoons, period. Growing up, I didn't like cartoons. I didn't watch cartoons. I don't like all that cartoon mess. This is why. Y'all need to stop watching cartoons. This is, this is what happens. Now, your cartoons are teaching my kids about racism. So I don't even like cartoons. This I don't even mess with Sesame Street, Big Bird, and what's all that, all that stuff. I don't. Well, you know you play with Tickle Me Elmo and everything else. I so did not play. play. Nah, uh, no, uh, no, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> I had bigger brothers who controlled the TV, controlled the radio in the car. I did not grow up. Watch, I've never watched an episode of SpongeBob in my life. I've never watched Sesame Street. I've never watched Tickle Me Elmo. Was that a show or just a bear? I've never watched any of these things. You never seen SpongeBob? Never seen an episode of SpongeBob. The only cartoon that I have seen was Arthur and what's the purple guy? Barney. Uh, Barney. But what them that people? And and then them people come out to me got like they got some issues too. So I mean, I think the first of the underlying story is y'all gotta let these cartoons go unless it's the little. The girl Gracie that my nephew and niece watching now, and Coco Bella, but we've heard some things about them too. You I know, can't. I, mm -mm. I'm not gonna play with you on here today. I don't now, know. Now, Maya, yeah. Philadelphia, let's make that clear. That location clearly thought they were gonna be able to get away with it. Oh no, he was just looking over it. But now, well, I think it's offered for them to, you know, come back and have a new experience and everything like that. But you know, of course, who wants to come back, you know, after such a traumatizing experience, not even just for the kids, but for the parents right. as well. Like, yeah. you save your money, you want to go create memories with your children, um, you know, from a place that, you know, they watch this show clearly, you know, all the time. And so mm -hmm. it's got to be traumatizing for them as well. Yeah. And shout out to Kelly Rowland, though, for using her platform to really get it to the level that it is, because, yeah, the mom may have pushed it out there. But we I know I did not know about this until I saw Kelly Rowland say, if that was her kid, the whole parade would have been on fire. No, and now so many other people are coming out. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's yeah. the same location or different locations, but it's not just this one character. It's multiple different characters. And I'm not sure who was playing that character that slept the little girl, but, you know, he needs to be fired. That's also what the family is calling for, for the person who had the Rosita, you know, um, costume on to be fired. Um, but whoever slept the little girl needs. They all need to be fired. Absolutely. I agree with that. So like I said, disclaimer, there may be something that happens and transpires from the time you are watching this episode. But yes. as of right now, this is all the details that we know. And we do hope the little girls and all the kids that have been affected are good. Uh, but as far as me and my house, we will not be watching cartoons. Now, <laughs> that's what I took from all this. That's what, everything y'all talk about. I'm glad the Lord did not soften. Sesame Street is not a cartoon, though. What is that? It, I don't know. It's just a show with characters. It's not a cartoon. Cartoons are like, I don't know, Arthur. I feel like Sesame Street is more cartoon. Family, like. I get what you're saying, but isn't Sesame Street? 
<laughs> isn't Sesame Street more cartoonish than like humanish? What? <laughs> Did Beyonce prepare you for this podcast? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And after this episode, I have so much more respect for her for doing this with you every week. All right. And I should have put this disclaimer out. I've been telling Beyonce and our listeners this before they watch or listen. Like today, I'm going off of no sleep. So you're probably getting anything that's coming out. You know, there's that Ryan. There's the Riesling Ryan. That's when I drink the Riesling. Uh, there's, there's different versions, you know? I pray for them all. Okay. Well, we accept all prayer. All right, bye. Let's get into this topic. We are both in this industry, right? We're both in the media industry. We've been in it for a while. We've gone to school about it. And me and you were having an off mic conversation of just how this industry is going and whether if it's talent or if it's mixed with who you know and the social media and the clout. And prime example, we're on a podcast right now. How many celebrities, how many artists now have podcasts? And I know one of the things that I'm seeing is that a lot of big interviews that radio stations would have gotten with big artists, these big artists are now going to their celebrity friends to do the interview. So if Kevin, prime example, Kevin Hart got an interview with Jay-Z, Jay-Z's not going to a radio station no more to do these interviews like it used to be back in the day. With both of us being in the media industry, you having a lot of experience under your belt uh, what are your thoughts on this whole, and just take, not even just media, but just any industry that you're in, is talent, does it outweigh who you know and social media now, or now is social media kind of just taking over, where you ain't got to have that talent, but if you got the numbers and the clout, we want you. Listen, I think social media came in with a vengeance. I really do. I think it matters. It does. Yeah. Um, but I have to say that while you have the social media followers, while you have, um, you may have the presence, uh -huh. I can't say that you will, it may get you the job, but it won't keep you the job. Ah. That's, <laughs> That's it. That's it. I, I, you know, it's just like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, you know? Mm. Um, so I do believe that, I mean, it's just like going to school, right? Mm -hmm. You can go to school, go to class, get good grades and be done, right? Mm -hmm. But going to school is also about opportunities and getting to know people and mm -hmm. picking people's brains and things like that. You know, you can go to class every day, do your homework and just do that. Mm -hmm. But you can get so much more out of college if yeah. you actually go and make those connections with people. And that's kind of what it is. You know, connections can get you far in this game. But you also do got to go to class and learn what you need to know to be able to keep that job. <laughs> I completely agree with what you said. I know a lot of people, I'm not going to say no names, but I know a lot of people no. <laughs> <laughs> that have been like, yo, I'm creating a podcast. And I'm like, okay, okay, cool. I'm here for it. Go right at it. What happened two months later? Where the podcast at? Yo, that's a lot of work. Y'all didn't know I got to do this every week. Yo, that's a lot of editing. And I'd be like, welcome to my, this is what we go to school for. This is what we study for. This is what we put in the work for. This isn't just that I'm doing this on my free time and then I'm chopping it up. I, I, I think what's frustrating is, and I just keep talking about our industry because that's what I know we both can relate in, is that we see a lot of people that are now getting positions because of their numbers and their social media following. Mm -hmm. But is it matching to the talent? Now, let me say this. There are some people who may have gotten in the door because of their social media and their clout. And they do put in that work when they Absolutely. mix it with radio, television, whatever they're in. And they're like, yo, I actually really have a passion for this. They come in humble, like, yo, can you teach me how to do this? I really want to do it. Absolutely. And you may not find them always, but when you find that one or two people that mix their clout and their social media with the actually putting in the work, there's nothing I can say to that person. To that person, I'm like, hats off. You deserve to be in this industry because that does not happen a lot. But there are those people and I have to put those people out there because I don't want to put everybody in the same boat. But for oh. those that are in the same boat, I think that's where it's frustrating, where we, months, years, you never know how long it's going to take. But, you know, eventually it's going to get to that place of like, what happened? Like, why are you not? Why are you not about it? 
And I think that's the frustrating thing of there are people that are constantly putting in work every single day, but I mean, I, I'm building a social media following, but it may not be there for someone who may have gotten quicker, however you got it. And I think one of the things I want to bring up to you, a prime example of this is TikTok. How many TikTok stars are there now that went from no one knew them to just now celebrities off of TikTok and social media app? Yeah. I'd be looking like, did I, what, what am I doing wrong, Lord? But listen, you know, I talk to so many young kids and I say, you know, if you really want to be on this industry, it's just now another open door for you to be able able to walk through, you know, um, instead of going the route that you and I went through, you yeah, know, yeah. take advantage of it. It's so funny though. <laughs> and I've been getting mad because me and you kind of went the intern route. We went the old school route of you're probably just going to go get food for lunch and you're probably just going to clean the mail room. That's kind of the route that we both. I didn't, I didn't go down that route, but <laughs> Now, we didn't talk about this during show prep, Maya. Right? I'm over here trying to set you up. <laughs> Bye-bye. I threw the pass for the makeup. You I mean, if they wanted me to, I would have, but... Well, let me tell you about my experience. <laughs> let, me, let me give my testimony. Oh, Maya's like... Sorry. <laughs> but you went through a route that you had to grind. Oh, abs oh absolutely. You went through that beginning stage. Absolutely. absolutely. Right. I think that's the, there are things that we learned. Let's take it to, we both have worked in radio before, correct? Let's take it to, there are things that we know simply as when the red light is on and they're on air, what do you not do? <laughs> talk. You don't talk? You don't, you don't walk through the door. <laughs> oh, I thought I was already in the studio, see? You didn't go through that other part. That's all that is. <laughs> you didn't go through the other stuff. But I say this to say, I say all this to say, you see these people now that I be getting so frustrated with because I'm like, how do you not know these things? But then I'm like, you came in on a new wave of this social media area that is different. And I can't be mad at them. No. A part of me is almost jealous of them. Like, teach no. me your ways. No, not jealous. But, you know, also, I just think it's also an opportunity for us to teach them what they don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, everybody doesn't have to take the same path as me or as you. Um, but if you have the work, you know, you grind, then I have all the respect for you. Mm -hmm. You could teach me something and I could teach you something and let's do this thing together and let's take it to the top. Mm -hmm. Um, so I respect those that, you know, are social media quote unquote yeah, famous and famous. influencers, yeah. um, and they want to break into this industry. Absolutely. If you come in hungry and you ask the right questions and you ready to work, then let's go, you know, but if you also are just, you know, but I have to say too, like doing the whole social media thing, I think it's work. I was, wait, as you were talking, I was just about to say, it's for work. people that are social media, I know? <laughs> it's I wrap work. it up, because if you post one picture a week, I'm like, oh, what's the caption? Then I got to put this, then I got to do this. Man, oh, and you got to have a schedule, you need to be organized, and so right. if you become an influencer on TikTok, you know, kudos to you because it's not easy. It's not. So, that's, that's facts. So, yeah. It is definitely work. Okay, before we get out of here, Maya, I didn't tell you about this on show prep, but I just want to throw this in your face and I want to get your opinion on it really quick. So yeah. as we know, Chloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson had the most on and off relationship ever, right? Last week, they announced that they have a baby boy coming via surrogate. Okay, well, literally a few days ago, Chris, Tristan Thompson was caught in Greece holding another female's hand. Social media went crazy and was like, yo, Chloe, he is out here with another female again. What are you doing? Why are you having a baby by him? We thought you guys are together. I'm on the other hand, I'm on the fence of like, Chloe knows what it is. Trist Tristan has probably told her, yo, I'm out here. I'm not with you. She's probably like, that's fine. I just want my kids to have the same father. What are your thoughts on it really quick? She probably does, you know, she probably does want her kids to have the same father. You know, it's really up to her to know her worth and know that what she will stand for. Um, but at this point, she can't not know that this man is just out here with literally everybody. So maybe that is literally what it is, but I don't know. I don't think I would want, I'm not, I don't want my children to have the same father that bad. That's okay. That's what I was going to ask you. If you were in the situation, is it that serious? 
to have Absolutely. the same father that you were to like a bad habit. Absolutely not. Like you look stupid. I pray. I I literally I have to pray for her because I don't know why. At the end of the day, that is just your child's father. Leave it at that and go live your best life. Because you were before him, you can do so after. Hmm. I think she still wants Tristan. And I think she is hoping that something with them stays as a family unit. It it just gives off like you look pressed right now. Like you, you don't, he doesn't have to be the same father. In my opinion, that's my opinion. But if you can't call her for wanting her family, you know, no judgment. But at the same time, know your worth and go live your best life. He surely is. Living his best life out in Greece. <laughs> 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 you said what kudos to her no kudos to him at this point <laughs> he, he he's i mean not for me but okay <laughs> at this point he probably then told her she's still cool with it cool i got two kids from you and i can do what i want to do at this point and i hope she's doing what she want to do it, 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 it. All right, I'm going to get out of here before I said I was going to be very respectful. We have a guest on today. Thank you guys for tuning in. No, Maya, thank you for holding down Beyonce. See, you fit in perfectly. You disagree with me on a lot of points. So that's about just like Beyonce. I just want you to know. Maya and Jay, thank you for feeling good and hanging out with us on the We'll Just Agree to Disagree podcast. What episode is this? This is your show. I'm just filling in. You know, usually Beyonce knows this stuff before we do it. Episode 68 of the We'll Just Agree to Disagree podcast. Beyonce, I love you. I'm trying. I love you, B. We love you, B. I'm still trying. Uh, you guys can follow us on Instagram and YouTube at We'll Just Agree to Disagree. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Peace. Bye, Maya. Bye. Stop watching them cartoons. <laughs>